From United Nations Television, this is UN in Action. Young girls wanting to go to school in India face a silent struggle. Lack of privacy, safety, and proper facilities when they reach puberty are barring many from their right to an education. Archana Patkar works with the UN's Water Supply and Sanitation Collaborative Council, WSSCC. They don't have facilities in school, so they can't change their cloths or pads easily. As a result, they're wearing an over-soaked, wet, cloth or pad all day, are unable to concentrate. Sometimes it's so bad that they just leave and go home missing school. While the lack of facilities in schools is shocking, what's worse is the social stigma surrounding menstruation, a culture of concealment and secrecy which leaves girls feeling ashamed and isolated. <laughs> For Pushpa and her friends, trying to hide the signs became so difficult, they dropped out of school permanently. Up to a quarter of schoolgirls in India leave school when they reach puberty. At many schools, although in the curriculum, the chapter on menstruation is often skipped. In India, a country with a population of over 350 million women and girls who menstruate, this omission can have far-reaching and profoundly negative effects. Rama and her granddaughter Rupali say the superstitions are passed down from generation to generation. <laughs> These myths may seem far-fetched, but they can do real harm. Girls who cannot wash privately or who are too ashamed to wash their sanitary cloths run a constant risk of infection. And with these taboos go hand in hand the problems of sanitary disposal. Very often because it's linked to shame and taboos uh, and the fact that nobody's supposed to see you disposing of the used material, this is just dug into a little hole or thrown into running water or a pond. We must look at it holistically and provide solutions, either incineration, composting, environmentally safe, satisfactory solutions. The WSSCC is working hard to end the silence and to emphasize the practice of menstrual hygiene and safe disposal. The Collaborative Council has trained hundreds of project workers in menstrual hygiene management to work with girls and women throughout India. And in December 2013, the Government of India approved the WSSCC proposal to change policy guidelines. For the first time, menstrual hygiene management was recognized in the national sanitation policy with an allocated budget. We must talk about it with pride and without shame. We must manage it hygienically, safely, and with dignity. With the immense potential educated Indian women and girls can bring to their country, it is essential to change the curriculum for a healthier, safer, and more prosperous India. This report was produced by Andrew Martin for the United Nations.